Today we are traveling to Indonesia, Bali specifically. This is the beautiful home of the nicest bad guy you'll ever meet, Matthias Hulz. Matthias was discovered in Gold's Gym in the 80s and became an action movie star. He participated in movies such as Fists of Iron, Talons of the Eagle, TC2000, and Dark Angel I Come in Peace. Nowadays, he lives between Bali and Hollywood and was kind enough to share some backstage stories as well as some advice based on his career. Join us in what will be a great new episode of the Bruce Willow Podcast. It's so hard to find anything where we live, but I, <laughs> we found it. I, I already lost uh, two of my cell phones. Really? Because we, yeah, we, we in Bali, uh, one second, and um, we are in construction. Oh, and... okay. <laughs> oh, oh, it's so tiny. She's so little. And yeah. she's already five weeks old, you know. Wow. So she must have been like a, a grain of salt. <laughs> Wow, she's so. And she was, and she doesn't grow, and um, it's always we have so many little animals because we live in the jungle, and yeah. um, someone always drops off something and says, "Oh, that one got shut down. That one is found in the gutter," and then you end up having it. You know, for instance, where's the monkey? Let's see. Are you kidding? You have a monkey? Uh, is he still there? Yeah. Well, so hold on one sec. You gotta show me the monkey, Matthias. <laughs> Yes. You see I, him? Oh yeah. What's his name? That's Shuto. Shuto. Hi Shuto. Shuto just had breakfast. Oh, oh. good morning, Shuto. Good morning, Shuto. He's like my son, you know, my retarded son. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can see him. Okay. I I can I can see Shuto. Yeah, I can see Shuto. Yeah, yeah. Ec incredible matthias yeah. if you had to choose yeah. one exercise for the rest of your life which one would it be huh uh, i don't i i don't oh, mean sex okay sex is out of the question here <laughs> sex is out of the question yes only Nothing one exercise else. no uh, uh just biceps <laughs> because <laughs> yeah good good question good answer <laughs> good answer most, most people that's the easiest for everyone right it's doing biceps um the hardest for for people like me was always doing legs. Oh, okay. Uh, but I love legs. I got obsessed with working out my legs for many, many years. And then now you pay the price. You know, the knees are broke. I mean, meniscus, bone on bone, shoulders, bone on bone. Uh, I always wanted to be real big, but not like a professional bodybuilder, but mm -hmm. sort of like the wrestlers that I liked, uh, Lex Luger or someone like that. And uh, so when you work out at Gold's Gym in Venice, you meet a lot of inspirational people. And the best ones, the biggest ones, sorry. It's okay. Always work one body part really. The ones they want really to stand out, they work it all the time. How did you uh, get those many injuries? Was it through movie work? Uh, I think through working out, to be honest. The movie work is pretty easy. Um, mm -hmm. People always say, oh, I get... The only way you get injured in a, on a film set, if you fall, trip, a car falls on you or you fall down 20 feet or something, usually you don't get injured that much. It's very safe. Um, but the working out is the hard part. Yeah. The constant working out. I never not work out. So imagine since 15 years, you're in the weight room, you're running, you're jumping. So you're bound to abuse your bones. You know, you end up being bone on bone because you overuse it were you a hard gainer for the legs you were talking about how it was difficult for you is it because you're too tall uh, and the yeah. range of motion is more difficult 
yeah, when you're taller, everything takes a lot of work to bulk up. It's really bizarre, you know. You have to put a lot of effort into it, and you got to eat a lot. And I never liked food so much. So the food, the food is so very much important, as you know, right? It's what yeah. you eat. And all my life, I didn't like eating. I thought, ah, I don't, I don't want to eat. But you have to eat all the time. Uh, yeah. in order to stay big or lean both you know if you want to stay lean you better if you eat every two hours just a small amount you know yeah you'll you'll ha you'll keep your muscles and you're lean but that's a lot of work how old were you when you started doing sports it was track and field track and field 15 so early on yeah it's usually i think uh how do people start anything um for me it was my father took me to his track and field training and I had nothing to do and I thought, oh, you know, might as well run around, you know. And that's sort of how it starts. Someone introduces you to something. Could have been tennis, could have been golf. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you like it, you stick with it. Yeah. And uh, uh, you you yeah. did some decathlon competitions as well? Uh, yeah, I wasn't a good decathlon, decathlon uh, competitor, so more pentathlon. Oh, okay. Um, it, yeah, so I settled for that. The decathlon, I had problems with uh, pole vaulting. Mm, and then yeah. that was it, you know, for me on that one. And the hurdles. I'm not, I wasn't flexible enough, I think. Oh, okay. So did, be flexible, that's the key, right? And I when was did too you, lazy to stretch. And when did you start <laughs> doing martial arts? Because you have a lot of movie fights in which you can see that you had some, some training in the martial arts, obviously a lot of training in the martial arts to Your, keep up with Bolo I mean, Young started, and Billy Blanks and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, I started when I was 15. Taekwondo. Oh, yeah. A lot of kicking. Yeah. A lot of kicking. And uh, um, again, I wasn't good at stretching. So I knew I was limited in it, but I was an athlete. So I can jump really high. I, you know, so it kind of worked out. But if you see real Taekwondo fighters, they take it all the way to the top. It's unbelievable how they can control their legs, you know. It's wow. just way better than what I ever could. But they don't look like me either. So you know what I mean? You got to find the middle ground. I knew if I would want to make it in Hollywood, I have to have a certain amount of muscles, but I also have to be able to move. Mm -hmm. So most people that are top fighters they don't have that much muscles mm -hmm. there's a very few you know who can be that flexible with with big t thighs or big arms you know they it slows you down a lot it's very difficult to find that balance because i work as a stuntman myself yeah. and i believe that i'm yeah, kind I saw of that uh, i saw your stuff i checked you out and I, i'm really impressed with what you do and i love oh, your man. instagram page it's oh fantastic. man i'm so yeah i'm so honored thank you so much yeah. I'm, I'm gonna start crying uh, man don't say that <laughs> Thank you so oh, much. You're very funny. You're very funny. <laughs> I, I try. I try. I don't, I'm just a clown. I'm just a clown. You really are. You're definitely a performer. And, <laughs> you know, when you do stunts, you perform. I think yeah. uh, you're, you're only as good as your performance. So stuntmen do perform. Mm -hmm. And you have to make it look real. You have to imagine you uh, a stunt double for an actor. You have to actually have these move the movements down of the actor right mm -hmm, yeah so it's very difficult and underrated we are body uh, actors we are body actors basically yes you're body actors yes yeah and i met a lot a lot of uh stuntmen that might as well be actors because they are so good at mimicking uh one of my best friends uh, was arnold's stuntman for so many years he was so convincing that when they are on a break, they're sitting in the chair or whatever, that the wife even from Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> thought that my friend is Arnold. <laughs> uh, that they're that good at it. Yeah. Or uh, Vanessa Williams was telling my friend all these little secrets, you know, about last night and stuff. And he didn't know what to do because, you know, he wasn't Arnold, but he didn't want to embarrass her, you know. Uh, <laughs> Man. <laughs> he also... That's crazy. Yeah, there are so many crazy stories. Yeah, when they shot Mr. Freeze... Arnold yeah? shot three weeks and my friend shot three months as Arnold. Wow, well, because he, he was a stand-in as, as well. He, he, he was a stand-in as well. He was even saying some of the lines. He's that wow. good. So we're talking about the best of the best, you know? Yeah, uh, what's his name? What, what, what's his Daniel name? Daniel Donnay. He lives in Australia. Daniel Donnay. Hmm. Daniel Donnay. You can check him out. Uh, 
when I first met him, I was shooting Conan in about him all the time, and he was uh, coordinating Conan. And when I saw him walking towards me, I thought, oh my God, there's Arnold. Same eyes, same demeanor. But I have to say, they put prosthetic on his uh, nose. Oh, okay. Jaw to yeah. make it 100%, right? Yeah, if they can Still, use him as a stand-in for everything, yeah. I mean, why not? Why yeah. not seize yeah. it? But I was, I was saying that uh, uh, because uh, there's uh, a hard time finding people to have both worlds. I mean, both the physique and the skills. Uh, a yeah. lot of the times, a lot of the times, people see my stunt reel or something, and they right away ask yes. me, "How tall are you?" Because I, I know that maybe if I were like six two or six three, I'd had it made or something. Yeah. <laughs> but they never want yeah. short guys. They always want tall guys <laughs> it depends i mean let's say i don't know uh let's say you double i don't know antonio banderas maybe oh right? yeah I, I, get, antonio banderas? I know i don't know but i think he's probably six five ten or five eleven maybe yeah and how I'm tall guessing. are you i'm um, i'm uh, uh i'm uh, five uh nine five nine five nine five yeah nine. so you can double anyone and you can even double a six foot person because uh you Stuntmen's are not always the same height. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, but I understand. I understand. It would be ideal. Let's say, if you double an actor, you exactly a clone of the actor. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, Dolph Lundgren has a stuntman, Johnny Messenger. Johnny Messenger, I think. He looks like Dolph, and he's six four. He's six five, like Dolph. You know. So it does help if you actually if i could in my age find a stuntman my size that would not be bad you know mm, okay. uh but then again i learned one thing from uh this director greg baxley i did dark angel i come in peace <laughs> do it yourself make the audience aware of it that it's you who jumps whatever through fire or whatever it's better oh because he was a stunt coordinator right yeah he was a stunt coordinator and he was a son of a bitch really like typical american hardcore stuntman yeah. and you'll find yourself wanting to please him all day long because he has that way about him you know because he's doing it himself too these you know what i mean these are really sure man. The earth stunt people they won't yeah. ask you unless they will do it yeah you know? it's like they're cowboys they they they're, they're like yeah you're yes, you're cowboys. you're you're crying it yeah. hurts tough luck man yeah yeah i know i know how yeah, to work it off walk it off yeah walk when, it off uh, yeah yeah, I've worked with I don't a couple. Know. You know, when you're young, because when you're young, you do everything. Yeah. Does it make sense? Uh, mm -hmm. With age, you get a bit more vulnerable, but you still can do so much. Uh, I'm a huge admirer of Sylvester Stallone, who to this day in his 70s does everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he does so much. So uh, if there is a will, there's a way how to do it. Sure. Did you ever get to meet him? No. Did you ever get to meet Sly Stallone? Uh, yeah, I, I kind of see everyone on a regular base. Sylvester Stallone is not too friendly for some reason to me. Mm -hmm. Don't know, maybe he doesn't care. Mm -hmm. I know Arnold, we smoke cigars and more friendly, work out in Goldstrom. So Sylvester Stallone, maybe because I don't know him, he's not the one that will come up to me okay. and say anything. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also you have to understand, so when I see him in Beverly Hills, it's usually Cafe Roma, and there's so many fans and so many people want to take a picture with him and everyone wants something from him. So it's very guarded. Mm -hmm. uh, and the last thing you as an actor is want to go to another actor and bother him, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, if I'd love to know him, obviously, you know, yeah, I'd of course. love to be in Expendables. Um, but You'd be Dolph great in Expandables, Ben. I, I swear. It's Dolph Lundgren, you know. I swear yeah. not to toot your own horn, but I mean, Matthias, I, I would, yeah. I would, so much, uh, I would you. so much replace one or two of the guys that are there to put you in, man. I, I swear, it's not to toot your own horn. Oh, thanks. I swear. Do I oh, say Matthias? So nice. I mean, is I, it, I wish I would be. In. Mm. Is it Matthias or Matthias? Matthias, right? Matthias. It's Matthias, yeah. Matthias, it's Matthias. Who's, who's? But you know, yeah. I have a, a Hollywood is very strange. You, you, I want to tell you uh, because if you live in Hollywood, you run into a lot of scenarios. Mm -hmm. And when I was uh, very young, I never forget it. I went to a charity uh, for the St. Jude's Hospital 
mm-hmm. and it was uh, like the plate is fifteen thousand dollars or something. So my friend is very wealthy. He invited me, but I was sitting with uh, Sylvester Stallone's mother at the same table, and Whitney Houston is singing. You know, it's like only wow. a few hundred people. And then Sylvester Stallone comes in, says hello to the mother, and the mother sits next to me, and she was. Oh, she was almost like hitting on me. That was like 30 years ago, right? She was maybe 50 <laughs> some years old. And he took one look at me. I'm not kidding. And he thought that was before I was doing movies. And he looked at me like, what the fuck are you doing with my mother? Sorry, but you know. Yeah, yeah, no, and it's I, okay. You can swear. You can swear. Yeah. And I thought, wow, this guy's forever going to think I'm a gigolo or something. That was before <laughs> I was doing movies. <laughs> and uh, then I th- that always carried with me. And I thought, well, maybe in the back of his mind, because most people remember me the way I look, uh, he always resented me without knowing it. Okay. There's another okay. case. It's really interesting. A friend of mine who looks kind of like me uh-huh. dated Mickey Rourke's girlfriend, oh. uh, Carrie Otis. And okay. because of him, she split up with Mickey Rourke and that literally destroyed him, right? Oh, yeah. So for years mickey rourke walks around la looking for me and want to confront me for stealing his girlfriend and but it wasn't me it was this other guy uh who had long blonde hair who was a surfer who also worked out at gold's gym and to that day mickey rourke will not say hello to me wow man that's you know what i mean that's crazy uh, it's like we're living in a village we're living in a village and sometimes wow. in that village, things happen that will actually find you later in your career. Wow. Where people think something about you that is not true or whatever, you know, it's just, uh, you never know. And I also know, and this is another interesting point, that Sylvester Stallone didn't like big people, mm. like tall, tall people. And he said in many interviews how much he resented Dolph Lundgren. You have to understand. Dolph Lundgren, when he did Rocky, was probably the first person on the planet that all of us saw who thought, who the hell is this? This is like a god, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He looked like a Greek god. And you have to understand that Stallone probably looked up to him and said, you you know, you motherfucker, you know, (laughs) you got it all. You got the looks, you got all this. So he, he really didn't like him. But over decades and decades, when men get older, they realize that this is all bullshit. This is all ego talking. Yeah. Because yeah. Sylvester Sloan is way better than anyone else. I mean, yes, he, he doesn't need to be jealous of anybody. He carries his own glory so well. We're envious of him because he's such a man, you know. Uh, did, so, mm-hmm. did, did you ever get to a point throughout your career in which you started feeling a little bit of that, like a little bit of that, uh, it's getting to me, it's getting to my to my head? No, oh. because um, I'm not built that way and maybe mm-hmm. I should build. It's almost better if you are that way because uh, people expect you to be this way. And if you're very human, if, you're very, uh, if you stay very grounded, uh, you lose respect. Okay. So, Unless you think you're larger than life, no one believes you are larger than life, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it it makes sense, yeah. Yeah, Uh, but this comes with birth, a lot of people, or with fame. So I was really known for about 10 years once the DVD market came about and the VHS, and everything was playing nonstop around the world. So wherever I went in the world, I basically... I couldn't walk anywhere without people following me. I didn't have to go to customs. It was really bizarre how this happened. And uh, yeah, you get used to it really fast. The only reason that I stayed grounded is that when I came back to Los Angeles, I was back in line behind the big oh. boys. Yeah. Okay. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I can see. I can see that anyone, anyone that becomes world famous will have a moment where they believe their own fame. Mm-hmm. I believe it. It's you, so... know, you get everything for free. Wherever you go, people tell you nice things. They never really tell you bad things, right? You, you get uh, the best places, the best seats. You, everything is catered to you. Oh, and for free on top of it. 
That's um, that's got to do something a little bit poisonous to your head. So I'm glad that I you think so. I'm glad that you remain this so. incredible character who was here talking to a guy from Portugal and you know, you don't even know me and we're talking oh, like we've no, known each other know, for for no quite a while. I you know what I believe? We are well, all one community. You're yeah. stuntman. <laughs> you're part of the business. Even if you wouldn't be part of the business, by just you asking a question, you are already part of us. I think that's Thank you so, so important, much. and it's yeah, and we are sharing, you know. Yeah, yeah. We we sharing information. So Portugal, for instance, that's uh, one. Of, I'm German. One of the Germans' yeah. favorite vacation uh, places, right? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Leslie's uh, sister just moved there from America uh, because she retires there with her husband, you know. So. Oh, uh, Leslie's Portugal, sister lives in Portugal? Portugal? She lives in Portugal? Her sister? Yeah, she lives in Portugal and she's American. And uh, so they packed up and poof, they, where do they move to? Lisbon? Somewhere in Portugal. Yeah, man, you gotta um, come You gotta come visit her. Yeah, the problem is the uh, Jehovah's Witness. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know. I know the Leslie religion. Yeah. Not, yeah, and Leslie is not no longer in the religion. Oh, so they're not allowed to have contact. What? Really? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's how uh, these religions. Uh, it's like I I know that they don't celebrate you know. stuff like Christmas and birthdays, but I had no yes. idea that they mm -hmm. they renounced even their brothers and sisters yes. once they yes. uh, quit the religion. I mean, even that's your a little, parents. That's a little even crazy. Your parents. Even your yeah. Parents. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. You know, that's why Leslie is not in the religion anymore and her parents are not in the religion anymore. But then if the sister is still in it, you know, that's it. Yeah. Okay. That's that's up to her. I mean, everyone has their own beliefs. Uh, you were yeah. you were discovered wh when you were in Gold's Gym. So at what age did you went? Yes. Did you go to the to the U.S.? I was 26. And why did you and decide to go to the U.S.? Ah, it was very simple. I uh, I owned a gym. Yeah. And uh, I saw Rocky IV. So, <laughs> and I yeah. saw Dolph. I saw Dolph Lundgren, and you know he was put up as this guy that is untouchable. Mm -hmm. You know, two meter tall, and everyone was always oh Dolph, Dolph. And I thought, damn it, I want to see this. I want to go there. I want to see if I can join the game. You know. Uh, so I went, I went, wow. but I, it's just really naive. I mean, I liked Rocky IV so much and I knew I wasn't Dolph Lundgren, I'm Matthias Roos, but I, I, I thought, okay, that's it. I'm, I'm uh, like a cowboy. There's someone that shoots really fast. Let me see how fast I can shoot, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's, so, uh, so once you saw it, it was like, okay, so he's tall, he's built, he's blonde. Yeah. He comes from Europe, yeah. just like myself. So it's like, huh? I mean, there's a market. Yeah. Let me try it out. There's a market. It's yeah. a market. Yeah. I I thought there's a market, but I didn't realize it wasn't that easy. So you know, so uh, it was. It, I thought it was easier than it really. You know, you. It's one thing you sit at home, uh, in a theater and you watch something, and then yeah. you, to actually do it. Mm, yeah. So, pack your suitcase, go to America, have no place to stay. Have only a little money that's still fun till all that runs out mm -hmm. and then how do i even get into the movies it's so interesting i mean the, the, <laughs> the way of how you even get into the movies is just crazy there's not even the formula you just have to do it and hope you get lucky but you have to have something you know so like so, i wrote this book shirtless in hollywood and I, i'm waiting I for it all these I'm waiting for it. Yes. I just I just bought it from Amazon. I'm waiting for it like for for a week and oh, a half are? already. Yeah. Yes, I wanted to have it here to show you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I want to know uh, those background stories. I, I, I want to know. Sign it for you. Oh man. Figure out how I can sign this. It, but it really it's that you can. There are so many stories, and I'm not the only one with these stories. Yeah. I met so many people like me that came to Hollywood because they saw someone in something, and they had something. They were martial artists or they were bodybuilders. They identified with someone they saw who made it. And it's like the gold rush. So uh, they packed up and they came to Hollywood and we all went to Gold's gym. And yeah. we all stood there one day like, 
and what now? <laughs> and then you have to figure this out and you realize you're not the only one, you know. Mm -hmm. If you think I was the only one with uh, six foot five, longish blonde hair, whatever, there were so many way better looking, uh, better bodies, bigger, taller. I thought I landed in the land of uh, mystical creatures or something, you know. Where do, where do they all came from? come from? And it's so difficult to make it because there are so many. So when I auditioned for Master of the Universe for He-Man, mm -hmm. I was literally in line. That, Dolph Lundgren was the lead of it. I was uh -huh. in line at a parking lot. It was a line of giants and good-looking people, six five, six six. I thought, how the hell am I going to get this, you know? And then, uh, oh, it was so intimidating. Yeah. But in the end, it really, it's a bit luck and timing. And what you also, besides, you, if you're just good looking or you have a good body, it's not enough. There's something you have to have. I don't, I, hard to pinpoint it, you know. For me, it was, uh, yeah. Did you, did you ever it, have it? It was a bit luck. Yeah, okay. Like the, the, the perfect timing being pow, being everything yeah. coming together at the, yeah. at the best time possible, right? So uh, would you and, say... And then, and then you have to perform. You have to mm -hmm. actually prove that yeah. you are that guy they want. And uh, it wasn't easy. I mean, I replaced Jean-Claude Van Damme because I was there at the right time at the right place and I befriended the manager of Gold's Gym. And he was a stuntman. And he immediately took a liking to me because I was a pentathlon athlete, track and field. And he said, okay, I'll keep you in mind. And to behold, not much later, someone called and said, we need to replace Jean-Claude Van Damme. He walked off the set in Thailand. They need someone in 48 hours. And he has to be from Europe, so Europe. And mm -hmm. he has to be a martial artist. I wasn't Van Damme, but I was a bit of a Taekwondo guy. Yeah. And that's all it took for me to get invited to the audition. And when I auditioned, the woman that auditioned me who wrote the script, for some reason wrote another script with a character that looked just like me. And the other producer didn't even want me. He said, well, he doesn't look like Van Damme. I mean, and he's not, can you do the splits and all that stuff? And I couldn't do it. And he took me in the backyard and we fought against each other. And he said, no, nope, I don't want to hire this guy. He's not on the level of fighter I, like Van Damme. Okay. Then the other producer said, no, if you don't hire him, there won't be a movie. So this other producer was above uh, the other guy. So they hired me. And to be honest, it was. If it's also in the book. When I did my first fight scenes... I got yelled at because I wasn't as good as they expected me to be. Oh, okay. However, while we were shooting the movie, I realized if I give it a thousand percent and if I'm willing to injure myself, if I do all my stunts myself, I just grew into it because you, it's, you almost have to, how can you do something right away without having ever done it? Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have, you have to, you, there's a you learning learn curve doing yeah <clears throat> there's a learning curve and i'm telling you i went all around the world to all the martial arts studios and most black belts cannot do a movie no matter how good they kick because they don't know how to do it on film yep you have to learn that and i had to learn it and i learned it and while i was learning it i thought if i die on this movie i don't care because the stunt guys i worked with are chinese stuntmen and they were honored to get hurt and they were getting hurt all the time. I said, I'm going to be just like them. So I earned my respect. I earned it. You have to earn your glory in Hollywood. You know mm. what I mean? You can't yes. be lazy. you mm. got to get injured. You have to show that you are willing to suffer. Mm -hmm. And that made me that guy. And then the word is out. Oh, that guy? No, no, he'll do anything. You ask him to jump, he'll not ask for a stunt guy, he'll jump. And that's how I got my next movie, because the guy said, if you do this movie, you're going to have to do all your stunts. And I want to see you running and jumping through fire. That was I Come in Peace or Dark Angel with Dolph Lundgren, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so that was the, the, the best first experience that you could have gotten. I'm, you're obviously talking about No Retreat, yeah. No Surrender too, right? Yeah, that's with, that's with Lauren Avedon and uh, mm -hmm. and Cynthia Rothrock. And uh, was the stunt coordinator uh, Corion? 
Yes, Ko Young. He was also the director. My so, goodness. How was yeah, it working with him? Was, about, how was he to work with? Oh, he was yelling at me. He was cussing <laughs> on me out and this and oh. that. And I was telling Leslie this morning, I learned hotel management in France. And if I would do something bad, my, my boss would huh? give me a hot plate to hold. He would give it to me with a napkin. And he would give it to me in my empty hand and I would burn my hands and he said, you hold it. And that's how I learned not to have dirty plates <laughs> around. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> that is so old uh, school. It's old fashioned. <laughs> yeah, it's that old is so school, old school. But old school. No, man, <laughs> this is crazy. It yeah. works. It works? Yeah. You got to go old school. That's why old school guys sometimes are more tough. Do, do you know The Rock, for instance? Uh, Leslie knows The Rock. She knows all the wrestlers. Oh, if you wow. know the wrestlers, and I went to wrestling school, it's the most brutal, toughest sport. So you escape, survive wrestling. Don't you think you can f do Fast and Furious? Mm. Sleepwalking. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sleepwalking. Yeah. Right? I mean, even people people yeah. give people give a lot of flack. People give a lot of flack to professional wrestling uh, because they think that only high school and college wrestling is the thing. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's a whole different sport. But in, in terms of stunts, in terms of the falls, in terms of the backflips these guys do on top of each other, the falls out of the ring, I mean, it's crazy. It's, they they got to be so injured yeah, at scary. times. Yeah. <clears throat> That's why that's why a lot of them. I don't know if you saw this documentary, but there's this great documentary called uh, "Prescription Thugs," which talks about the prescription <laughs> drugs. Uh, a lot of people are uh, addicted to prescription drugs, yeah. you know, and yeah. they talk a lot yeah. about the wrestlers. Some guys are up to a oh, hundred yeah. pills a day. A hundred pills a day, Matthias. A hundred. A hundred pills a day. One of the guys that that gives a little feedback on that documentary, he he ended up. Um, he had this crazy episode in which he passed out in a pool. If it weren't for his Holy wife shit. or something to, to save him, it was but, it was like oh impossible my. for him to, to to stay alive so far. So it was it was really crazy, really crazy. That's crazy. A hundred. I mean, I understand pills. because the uh, abuse that comes with that sport. It's bizarre. It's yeah, bizarre. Be because you start taking stuff like I don't know pain meds, you know, like a painkiller. Yeah, yeah. Especially but then the in America. Yeah, but then the painkiller gives you some sort of side effect on the other side, or then you oh, don't yeah. have a boner and you oh, want yeah. some stuff to spike oh, yeah. your your yeah. your uh, yeah. um, erection on, and then you take so other true. stuff, and then you, you take other stuff, yeah. and then you pile on stuff to keep on covering yeah. the side effects of each other's drugs, yeah. and it's it's crazy, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, you you dead before you know it. Yeah, man. So what? I mean, you've mm -hmm. seen. You've seen it all in terms of you know the people in Hollywood, and uh, it's it's crazy. Yeah. It's like a poisonous environment every every now and and, and then. What, was it so. was was that the reason why why did you decide to go live in Bali? Was that the reason why you you left uh, uh, no. California? Uh, I never even I didn't even knew Bali existed. Uh, it's how life is, you know. Leslie is my girlfriend from 1993. Mm -hmm. uh, we met at Gold's Gym, like. Most people meet of there. Course. She was of a course. successful model. <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> yeah. There was this beautiful girl. Of course. And I was an actor. And we, we both didn't know. She didn't know I was an actor. And she, I didn't know she was a model. I huh. only saw her in the gym. And I thought, this girl is so beautiful. Hmm. And then uh, one day she walks up to me. But I have a, a, my best friend is really good looking. He's 6'5". He's like dark hair, English accent. Like an Adonis, you know. Mm hmm and I went aside, I thought she's going to talk to him because he's the lady killer, right? He's the, the best looking guy out there. And she actually <laughs> approached me and I was like, oh my God, this must be a mistake, you know? Anyway, so we got together and then, uh, but I was shooting a lot of movies and then we kind of lost each other. And next thing I know, someone said, oh, no, no, she lives in Bali. And I said, Bali, where's that? I didn't even think about Bali. When you're in Hollywood, you're so close minded. All you think is about movies, you know? Yeah, and then next thing, you know, she's in town. Uh, Sixteen years later, and we had coffee together, and she says, "I live in Bali, isn't it?" And I, I'm coming with you, <laughs> you know, and I went with her, wow. and uh, yeah. So we didn't end up here. 
we stayed for a little bit and then I said we got to go back to Hollywood and we went back to Hollywood and uh, so we went back and forth for the next 10 years all the time and uh, but we stay now more and more you know so because you're gonna it's a beautiful island you're gonna stay in Bali in Bali uh, like in, no indefinitely I mean, no it's basically it's like this so we just built another house here mm -hmm. And um, I want to open up a gym here, a fitness camp, yoga, free diving, all these little things that I personally also can use to, you know, progress in my life and mm. become more flexible again or work out all the time. And then I have people come from all around the world and teach here. Uh, so with that in mind, so it's like my own training camp. Wow. And then incredible. when I have to shoot a movie, I go back out to wherever I shoot it. You know, mm -hmm. I uh, was in I was in Bali a couple of years ago, and actually, this is were? not this yeah. is not a great story because uh, I was in uh, um, uh, Ubud. Ubud. You were in Ubud, yeah. Yeah, are you That's close cool. to Ubud right now, or no? Not really. Are you? No, are you more? No, yeah, we okay. the coast. Oh, okay. Uh, and then I went to Lombok. You know Lombok, the other island. Obviously, you know Lombok. I, you went to Lombok, yeah, yeah. Yes, but I went there, and I was with my girlfriend in a massage parlor. We were, you know, almost naked, right, having a massage, uh -huh. and all of a sudden, seven point oh earthquake. Everything started falling. I was like, oh, oh. my, oh my fucking god! I, I got, I got uh -huh. up. He was there. Oh. Yeah. I was there, 7.0, man, and, and I she know. She was in Lombok with the earthquake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 7.0, that is unreal. Do you know how many people died? Man, it, it died like, uh, they had like three or four earthquakes in the course of like three weeks. Yes. And maybe 200 people died or something. It was crazy. And yeah. the thing is, you oh. know that the locals usually are used to those types of, of, of um, yeah. Yeah. you know, natural but incidents. But but this time, they instead of life laughing at the white guy and saying "ha ha this is normal here," they were like all yeah. crying and yeah. screaming. So we were like, "Oh my god, this is the real shit." Oh my god. So we get out of the spa oh and the spa was all all breaking up. Then we fe we Whoa. we fell on our way. We were all, almost butt naked, you know, oh on the street. God. And then I, I I picked her up and I was like, "Let's go to the hotel because this is gonna be fine." It was nighttime. It was like uh, 8 p.m. Uh, we went to the hotel like running and saying, okay, this was a bad experience. This is going to, we're going to get away from it all. It's going to be okay. But then we reached the hotel and there was like a line of a hundred people being escorted to oh, the mountain because there was a tsunami alert. Right. So tsunami we were like, oh my God, we're going to die. I was like, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to oh, die. I mean, I, I, just like so, in Thailand. <laughs> exactly exactly so we went up the 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 hill i started helping people as well because you know you had some heavier or some older people trying to go up the mountain as well it was really tough man and we didn't see anything because it was it was pitch dark oh my God, all the lights like... went out everybody was screaming saying we're gonna die we're gonna die i was so scared man i i as a stuntman i can say it was the scariest yes, yes. time Singing in my life. life yeah i'm gonna tell that to leslie she can't hear it oh yeah uh, later Later, when we off, because I'm wearing headphones, the adventures he had in Lombok, it's just unreal. Yeah, yeah, man. Was, I mean, I understand. Crazy. You know what? It's forever. Sorry, I keep moving the phone. Around. No, it's okay. Don't um, worry. Don't worry. It's yeah. for <laughs> you're forever yeah. going to be damaged on this one. Yes. Okay, because I've been through an earthquake, not as strong as 7 point, and I'm still shaky yeah. on that. So I cannot even imagine how you felt. Man, it's it's crazy That's because crazy. what happened was in my mind, and I started having a little bit more anxiety built up throughout throughout these these uh, yeah. next months. Yeah. Uh, because I was, oh, I, yeah. it's PTS. Some, sometimes you go through life without realizing that at the if you're at the wrong place at the wrong time, everything gets fucked yes. up, right? So on vacation, I, I, I yeah, I, I wasn't mindful of that, and now I am. So. Anytime that I listen to a, a bigger noise or I, I, I feel some vibration, yeah, 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 I'm, yeah. I'm like always alert. And I'm always thinking that uh, what that, if I'm mm -hmm. at the right, at the wrong place at the wrong time? You know, it doesn't just happen to other people. So it kind of sparked a little bit of it anxiety in my head. Other people. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. He ran up the mountains and everything. Yeah. They had to run, Leslie, because yeah. there's a tsunami in the dark with hundreds of people. And all these people already died. You know, Lombok was the worst. Yeah. And... Uh, but then, but then, 
just to finish the story, I mean, the, then yeah. a, a guy like uh, an hour later, we were all like afraid uh, on top of the mountain. A guy just went up and said, okay, the tsunami alert was released. So there's not going to be a tsunami, but there is going to be aftershock and it's going to be a great aftershock. Right. So guys, get out of the mountain right now because wow. you're not safe here. And I was like, oh man, not this again, not this again. <laughs> yeah. So it was really hard, but uh, and, uh, I mean. It all went well afterwards. Did you see? Did you see the footage from Gilly Islands? How thousands of people were waiting for a boat yep. to evacuate. Exactly. That that's exactly the earthquake that I was on, and uh, I right. met some people on the day after in the airport. And uh, in Gilly, wow. they had nowhere to run. So if there would be a tsunami, whole families would have been, Boom. you know, taken by the tsunami. So it makes it me really... not want to go to Gilly sometimes, you know. I, I would never really, go to really? Gilly because of that, but I, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I'm it's beautiful, you. but I don't know. I don't know. I tell you, every day, so we live across the street from Gilly, and yeah. my friend owns the boats that bring the people over there. <laughs> oh, and, man. And uh, every day that boat is full. Oh, okay. People forget. Yeah. Phuket. I don't, you remember Phuket, right? I went to Phuket. I like never went to happened. Phuket. Never went to Phuket. Yeah, but, but I remember like what happened. happened. Yeah. 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 The people I mean, are there. God bless those people, right? It's like, man, how can... Yeah. I mean, next day, after all that stuff, and I hardly slept anything, I was like crying on the inside. Everybody was going to work. Yeah. And I was like, wow, what wow. a what a crazy, uh, f fearless group of people that have to deal with this on a regular basis. So every once in a But while, people get beings. killed. Yeah, human yeah. beings just like us. Wow, it's crazy, I man. mean shows how resilient we are you know? yeah it's crazy yeah man. uh but uh i don't know i know about this thing to be honest in la um, we all the time we're waiting for the big one. Oh yeah yeah there's uh they say uh an eight pointer on its way you know so it could happen at any time wow man. i mean it's crazy the next thing you know it happens in bali right it's crazy who knows man who knows <laughs> I don't. I don't, I, 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 I don't really watch the news anymore because I'm gonna get stressful. So I don't watch the news. I don't want to know about Iran. I don't want to know about no earthquakes. Oh, so I don't want to know right. about the climate. Uh, the climate change. I don't want to know anything. Yeah. I don't I'm wanna, just. I don't want to fight. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to fight. No, take me, take me, take me, take me now. Right. <laughs> If I have to go, I want to go quick. I just don't want to be stuck in right. something like yeah. feeling that. Oh my God, nobody's gonna be here I to know. help me. I'm I gonna know. choke I to know. death. Oh, no. That's that's the crazy oh, part. Oh, horrible, horrible. <laughs> but but I'm I'm very glad to see that you found your 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 balance. And uh, what are your It's current balance, projects yeah. right now? What are your current projects? So, one, um, I just finished the script for Dark Angel. I come in piece two, Ooh. and I I wrote it with Leslie together, and we send it to MGM. So MGM is reading it right now. Wow. Uh, can't say if they take it or not. They're very interested. So But I, I heard I heard in, a, in another podcast I heard that the uh, the produ the production company I think it w wasn't it, wasn't it Warner Brothers that didn't want to release the, the the movie no yeah but it turns out now MGM owns it oh uh, good 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 yeah, good good so yeah. and then um, a friend of mine knows the vice president and he talked to him mm. and we gave him a presentation and he said well send me the script you know. So yeah, if if they decide <laughs> to do it, it'd be uh, Dolph Lundgren and myself again. Uh, and this time it's going to be set in Sweden. Oh, okay. And uh, in the snow, a lot of action and blood. You know, uh, there's an interesting story to it. So, but I don't want to say it yet. But the story will, you will like the story, and it will yeah. make sense. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one thing. And then we developed a television series because television is where it's at, mm -hmm. and we pushing that one right now uh so you mean like with netflix and stuff like that of, yeah well mm -hmm. but i'm uh pitching it to sundance and then we'll see if sundance accepts it february 12th i'm doing the pitch and then i'll get back to you eventually maybe by march or something good and if they like your concept they'll invite you and then they'll develop it with you so You got to do something uh, other than just, you know, get casted for whatever. 
man i saw a i saw a lot of your mu movies man i was just laughing my ass <laughs> off thinking of of this one scene you have in this movie called tiger heart where a guy goes to you and says you're the girl of my dreams I'm, my name is Brad, but you can call me Schnookums. Then you get up and you say, yeah. I'm Hank Schnookums. <laughs> yeah. You're the girl of my dreams. My name's Brad, but you can call me Schnookums. My name is Hank Schnookums. I gotta go. You remember that? <laughs> that was so crazy, yeah. man. Actually, that's that's so funny because my friend directed this movie, and as it is when your friend directs a movie, you go visit him. Yeah. On yeah. the set, and he said, "One funny, you know, you have such long hair. Why don't you sit at the jacuzzi and, you know, have this guy come up to you? And this would mean so much to me." And I said, "Oh, that's really funny." So we did that. You know. Oh, that was nice. Uh, that was so nice of you. Yeah. What happened to that to, to the main actor of that movie, Ted Jen Roberts, the the ninja boy? Don't know. What happened to him? You very, don't know? very talented. I don't know. It's yeah. a good question. Talented guy. There's a couple of guys who I, I don't do. know what happens to people. I don't yeah. know. It's like Hollywood is very difficult. Yeah. It's like no one cares. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe someone cares for a moment, and but if uh, nothing happens, then you're gone, mm -hmm. finished, and no one thinks about you. You can be forgotten like that, yeah. and then twenty years later, someone is. Oh, don't remember. Let's pick him back up. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's so much luck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who are the nicest I mean, people that you've worked with? Oh, Billy Blanks. Billy Blanks is great, right? One of my favorite. Mm -hmm. Cynthia Rothrock. Wow. Cynthia Rothrock. Don Wilson. Don oh, Wilson. Don the Dragon Wilson. Yeah. Yeah, James Liu. Um, Mark Tagaskas. Mark oh Gaspers. yeah i love those guys love all of them yeah 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 they're so fantastic they're real oh. fighters mm -hmm. especially billy blanks you know we had a lot of fight scenes together very never got hurt very gentle mark dagascas anyway they're all professionals and as you know as a stuntman it's not real mm -hmm. so but you have to have a, an ability to memorize a lot of moves for the master and uh yeah, I mean, you fight 10 hours, 12 hours a day. You have to stay limber. It's not for everyone. A lot of people have a hot temper. Mm -hmm. They hurt you when they get in a bad mood or they want to show that you are they are stronger. Um, it's always that one or the other guy that you got to be wary of. You know, anyone with an ego. Uh, Bolo Young was very nice, but uh, I couldn't read this guy. So I was like, huh, that's going to be weird because I couldn't read him. Do you know what I mean? Like, but I liked it in the end because he was, was he just cold like in the movies. He just doesn't say anything, and he it doesn't give you anything. So you are getting Bolo Young from Enter the Dragon or something. Yeah, you get yeah, yeah. That double impact. You get him just like it. He will walk up. He will not say anything. He he will somehow know what to do. You talk about what you're gonna do, and he's just gonna do it, and then he's gonna leave. And you're like, okay, I guess we just did that. And um, you just wonder, is this for real? Or is he going to hurt me? Or am I going to hurt him? I mean, it's really bizarre, but it does, helps you to stay in character. Does he speak English? I think that's his problem. He doesn't speak English okay. that well. Yeah, maybe that's, so, that's got to do with it, yeah. Yeah, he's just very Chinese. And you, it's hard to read certain Chinese people. You just know these Chinese people are usually for real. Mm-hmm uh they have hard training they don't mind getting injured you know mm -hmm. yeah uh yeah. you just don't know because in america everyone's like yo what up <laughs> okay so we're gonna do this we're gonna it's a little which you also cannot trust till you fight someone you don't know yeah. if they're good or not mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. someone can injure you so fast yeah because it's, it's choreographed move as you know uh you have to trust the other person I'm always a little bit angry whenever I have to fight an actor or sometimes even even a martial artist and yeah. they're not aware that movies is a totally yeah. different thing. You pretend like you're hitting, you don't hit. You pretend. Or or yeah, even yeah, when you have to, to Yeah, even when you have to block a punch, they go like they they want you to really block the punch and it's like, man, Yeah. I mean, there's you contact obviously, but it's not you, you don't have to hit me. You don't have to keep hitting me. 
and the women are the worst exactly. sometimes. The women are the worst. Yeah, women. They're yeah, driven, they're, you know? yeah, yeah, they're 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 tough, but it's like sometimes mm -hmm. they're skinny and and you really feel their bones going against your your muscles. So it's like, oh man, I you're know. hurting me so much. <laughs> but you want to look tough. Know. You want to you want to be tough. So you want to say, oh my god, I'm hurt. I'm, I'm the stuntman. I can't say that, right? <laughs> right. You can't like, hurt that. You can say that. I mean, yeah, yeah. You can as a stuntman. Oh, you can get really abused by actors. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some notorious actors in Hollywood that have bad reputations hurting stunt people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really bad, yeah. And uh, we all know them. <laughs> None of them. Nobody wants to work with them, but they all do need to. Okay, work. Okay, you so, got to spill it. Who? Who? No, you, you can. Can you say who, or or you want to say it? Uh, one guy that is very known for having hurt people is Steven Seagal. Oh yeah, I thought I thought that was the one you were talking about. Oh my, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, he's just I don't know why. Don't is know it an ego know. thing? Is it to to show he's tough as well? I don't know. I don't know. I like I his no movies. Idea. It's very known. We all like his movies. Mm -hmm, yeah, uh, he was the first one that I really enjoyed watching. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's weird. I was uh, always in line to fight him, but never happened. And I thought, oh, it's going to be interesting. You know, it's going to be really interesting. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> but it never happened. A bunch of guys like me were like, okay, let's do it. Um, Mat Matthias, I want to thank yeah. you so much for this little bit of conversation. It was a piece of heaven for me because oh, I, I've, I've been following you for forever. I don't want to take uh, too much Honest, of your time. You, you got to pet your monkey. You I, ju I just want to <laughs> ask you if you have any advice for anyone who's uh, willing to, you know, be a little better every day, so either at either at bodybuilding, either at acting, either at mm -hmm. stunting. If you could leave a little think, bit, uh, a little message. Yeah. yeah. little wisdom or something. Mm -hmm. um, nothing happens overnight. I mm -hmm. noticed that. If you want to be something or someone, you just have to continuously do it and visualize it as the final product. But to become the final product is baby steps. So I wanted to have a certain body and I was always skinny I was teased always that chicken chest and all that stuff and I thought okay I want to be a superhero or whatever it takes and it it took so many years year after year after year I looked in the mirror and I thought why is nothing happening why and it really took for a long time before a little bit happened you know mm -hmm. so this could be with anything it takes quite a long time Otherwise, I think everyone would be a champion. You know, yeah. you have to become a champion by doing small steps, no matter what it is. And if you have a dream, I think you can achieve anything if it's not a pipe dream, if it's for real. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Do you really want it? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's going to hurt. But that makes you stronger, so, so to speak. Man, wise words, man. <laughs> Wise words. Uh, do, yeah. just, just, Listen, just out of curiosity, yeah. uh, do, do you have any, uh, any yeah. um, are, are you mindful of what you eat nowadays? Is there anything about your nutrition that uh, would be? Uh, um... Yeah, to be brutally honest, no. No? <laughs> If I, uh, <laughs> hmm. uh, but I have a natural break. So You have um, a? I like to drink wine here and oh. there. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, uh, yeah. cheese, live good. You you will appreciate it. You from yeah. Portugal. You know of good course. food. You know, you know the good life. You probably live a very good life down there because you're Mediterranean. Yeah. So I like that type of lifestyle. So you can spoil yourself yourself. But if you know when to rein it back in, that's what you do. And I looked at your videos. You're in tremendous shape. So <laughs> you you know also what to do, right? Uh, I guess I think you, I do. You know <laughs> how much to take in and how when not to. <laughs> right? Yeah, I hope I, I hope so. I hope I'm not doing anything wrong, but yeah, I I do take some yeah. some huge breaks. I, I'm one of those guys there. It's either eight or the eighty. I, th this is a Portuguese expression. Mm -hmm. It means like it's it's either nothing yeah. or everything. You know, I'm one of those guys. Yeah, but it's so if, healthy. It's healthy. So Maybe if I have a beer, have everything. Yeah. Yeah. If I have a beer, I'm gonna have twenty beers. You know what I mean? I'm gonna have twenty. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And that's the way to do it. And I mm. always live by that. And then that then you say, Okay, that was that. Now I'm going back to the camp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Live life. Enjoy your life, but still 
to be a warrior. So, Matthias, please right. keep posting on your Instagram. I just saw your you. your little bit of his uh, story, uh, background story with Bolo Young in in your fight scene in TC oh, yeah. 2000. So please keep mm -hmm. posting your background stories, I and I yes. and I can't yes, wait I for the book to come because I really want to read it from Thank from so top much. to bottom. Thank you so much for having me on your show, Matthias. Anything you need me. from Portugal, let me know. Good wine, I know I'm your guy. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. Give me a bicep. All give right. me a bicep. All right. we'll start it. Give me a bicep. All right. Oh, oh ooh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. I, I needed that. I needed that. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. See you. Cool. Thank Here you. Here we go. Superhero shows. I come home from school, do homework, and then immediately, sometimes I wouldn't even do homework. I would just go right to what Superman, Batman, uh, uh, all, I read all these comic books, and I always dreamed of uh, being a superhero. And, um, and uh, when I saw Bruce Lee, 